Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today I'm going to talk about the Substance Painter versus Blender. So this brief discussion is about texturing and materials. Obviously Substance Painter doesn't do modeling and the many other things that Blender does, so Blender's the winner there. But how do they compare when it comes to making materials and texturing? Well, let's find out. First of all, I'd like to thank CG Boost for allowing me to use the images from their new course which they've let me take a look at and I can thoroughly recommend it. As usual, their content is absolutely fantastic. What I like about this one compared to other Substance Painter courses I've done is not only the fact that it's really accessible for beginners, but it's also from a Blender to Substance Painter point of view. And they talk about how you can set up your models within Blender and then take them across to Substance Painter. Links for that course are in the description. They are affiliated links, so you'll be supporting me if you click on those but I won't let it bias my opinion as to whether Blender or Substance Painter is better for materials and texturing. So first of all, it's important to say that Substance Painter is a paid for piece of software, so it's not free like Blender. One nil to Blender. It currently costs $19.90 a month, or you can get a year's subscription for $219 a year. It's probably worth saying that that's a indie license and that means your revenue needs to be under 100K per year. Now there is a student license and that will last for three years, but you must prove that you are a student and you have to refresh this each year. I think it's also important to mention that everything that you can do in Substance Painter, you can do in Blender, from what I've seen anyway and my experience. And that's in terms of the end result, not the tools that are available. So using Blender, you can come up with some very professional, excellent looking models dependent on your skill. Now please do comment below if you disagree with me. It's very helpful to other people who watch these videos so they can get more of a wider opinion. And do check out the comments below and see what people are saying. So why would anybody pay for Substance Painter when Blender can do it all? Well, especially from a beginner's point of view, the complex node system and baking system within Blender can be quite a pain to get to grips with. Even from a professional point of view, what can be done in a couple of clicks with Substance Painter can often take a good few minutes with Blender. For example, baking out materials from a high poly object to a low poly object, something that's really common in most workflows with professional models. In Substance Painter, you can bring both your meshes in and tell it to bake, and it will do it all for you and create the maps. In Blender, you have to hook up all your nodes, create all your materials, and wait for them one by one. Now it's worth pointing out that some people have made add-ons which can automate some of these tasks that Substance Painter automates within its program. But from what I've seen, most of those cost money. And from the looks of things, they don't seem quite as easy as Substance Painter still. One thing that I've not seen within Blender is upscaling of texture maps and Substance Painter can do that. So you can have texture maps of let's say 512 and then change your mind and boost them right up to 2K textures without any problems. So in terms of time saved, Substance Painter is a clear winner here. Also for ease of use, yes, Substance Painter comes out on top also. Another area where you can save time and actually some money is in the textures. They have lots of built-in textures or textures that come with the program. And therefore you don't need to search online for PBR libraries or pay for materials from different sites. Not only that, but they also have smart materials and smart masks. A good example of this would be, let's say, a rusty but painted metal material. So it would find the places that would most likely rust, let's say the very edges that are open to the elements, and it would add rust into there, but other sections that were big and flat, it would just put the odd scratch and the odd section of rust. So these smart materials and smart masks are able to look at your model and figure things out in terms of its direction and its cavities and then decide where to put the textures accordingly. You can easily edit these afterwards so you can go in and paint the bits that you don't perhaps like and adapt your textures and materials accordingly. So whilst Blender can produce excellent models and the equivalent in terms of textures and materials, the ease of use and the accessibility of Substance Painter is certainly beating Blender by quite a long way. It's worth considering in terms of your own work, whether you're a hobbyist and you want to get better, or you're a professional and you need to save time. Both, I would argue, it's worth going and spending some money on Substance Painter. Now you may ask why I don't use Substance Painter. 
One of the main reasons is that because I've got a Blender channel, I like to use Blender all the time for everything I do so that I can teach it to people. And I try to keep within Blender so that everything is accessible to people who may not be able to afford the costs that come with Substance Painter. Also, when it comes to things like hand-painted textures, which I seem to do a lot of, I tend to work on just one layer and Blender's adequate for that task. However, the more I see of people using Substance Painter and the results they get with fairly minimal effort, the more I'm encouraged to move across to that piece of software. I am extremely hopeful that the clever people at Blender will be able to implement some of these elements and make it simpler and easier for the users in the future. But for now, I would definitely say that Substance Painter is the clear winner. So do check out CG Boost's course. I'm actually still looking through it myself because there's lots of useful and handy hints in there. It covers all the important things in Blender, such as UV unwrapping and preparing your models for Substance Painter, but also all the details within Substance Painter, such as how to use the PBR maps, baking out your textures, and they've got lots of great project files that you can work through and follow along with the instructor. And remember, the links for that are in the description. So do let me know whether you agree or disagree in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I hope this helps.